Tonight, the growing threat as wind whipped flames stalk the city of Yellowknife. An evolving wildfire emergency. We take a look at everything together when we're analyzing the risk. And the urgent pleas to prepare. Canadian tourist destinations delisted by China. They definitely love coming here and we love having them, so it's impactful. A new blow to the industry and to diplomacy. Plus, together again. He's still the same amazing person. The child cancer survivor now working with the doctor who saved her life. A real dream come true. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Good evening, everyone. A menacing wildfire in the Northwest Territories is creeping dangerously closer to the capital city of Yellowknife at this hour. The flames less than 17 kilometers away. Late this evening, officials warned there was an extremely short window to evacuate safely. We are asking all those residents to be evacuated by Friday at noon. You put yourself and others at risk if you choose to stay later. Roughly 7,000 people or 15% of the territory have been evacuated so far. And if there is no rain, the flames could reach the outskirts of Yellowknife by the weekend. CTV's Joe Mackishan starts us off. With fire burning on the doorstep, the people of Yellowknife are now being told to evacuate the city by Friday. The out-of-control wildfire near the capital is moving closer. The main highway west could be overcome by flames tomorrow. Crews are frantically working to keep the city safe. They're including some wet fire breaks. Um, they're looking to do a fire retardant line. And so all of these together are multiple lines of defense uh, between the fire and the community. But some places couldn't be saved. Wildfires quickly ate up ground near Fort Smith and Hay River, leading to a mass evacuation. I'm from a small hamlet called Enterprise, which is just over the Northwest Territories Alberta border. Uh, it's got 101 people. All of them are now evacuees. The hamlet was directly hit by fire. It enveloped the community quickly. Most of it burned. This is the second time in two years Evelyn Coleman has had to leave in an emergency. Last year, her house was destroyed in a flood. This time, fire spared her new home. I feel so guilty, and the very first thing they said to me is, we all cheered when we saw your house. You know, so that's the type of community is. it is. Like, they're nice people, they're compassionate, they're, they care for each other, and we will rebuild. But the worst wildfire season in the territory's history is far from over. With more than 230 fires still burning, the military has mobilized troops to the fire zone. And evacuees continue to file into Alberta with no timeline to return. People are tired. People are anxious. Uh, they want to settle back into their homes. But we're always packing and unpacking. While back in the territory's capital, all eyes are looking west hoping for a shift in the winds and more wet weather. The little rain that is in Yellowknife's forecast tonight and tomorrow may not be enough to put a dent in this massive wildfire. Omar. 10 stays ahead. All right, Jill, thank you. U.S. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill are heading to Hawaii Monday to survey the devastation from the deadly wildfires that destroyed much of Lahaina and killed more than 100 people. But tonight we're getting a first look at video believed to show the initial sparks that led to the disaster. CTV's Adrian Gobriel reports. The road through Lahaina has reopened, though the path forward for this decimated town remains a heartbreaking journey. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is apocalyptic. It's is terrible. With President Joe Biden set to arrive in Maui on Monday, FEMA confirming today that cadaver dogs on the ground are struggling in the heat and hazardous terrain to locate those who perished in the flames. Which is why we are sending in additional dogs. This is live right across the street from my house. Multiple new videos show that downed power lines may have sparked the whole tragedy. Freaking power line just went down. Shane True walked out of his Lahaina home at dawn last week, just as a wooden pole snapped, igniting the brush in a flash. Like somebody lit a fuse for a fire 
and it just followed a straight line. With a garden hose in hand, True says construction companies brought their water tankers to assist. We thought it was all contained. And then from there, just went ahead about our day, thinking that it was all done. The soon to be inferno was far from over. The security video shows the flash of a downed power line inland from Lahaina. At least three class action lawsuits have been filed against Hawaiian Electric, alleging that if they de-electrified the system, it would have saved lives. The weight of this tragedy is still growing as we learn how some died. Franklin Trejos was found in his car, draped over his golden retriever, Sam. She was just saying she couldn't breathe, she couldn't breathe. On a family vacation, T. Dang thought her daughter may have succumbed to the smoke. We kept shaking her. We kept telling, call, I'm calling her name, calling her name. Unable to swim, the family of five were forced from their burning car and into the ocean. They all survived after spending four hours in the choppy Pacific waters. Hawaiian people, like, they gave us hope. Like, they... They saved us. Like, without them, we would not be alive. The state's utility company says it's still investigating the cause of the fire, as are the FBI and the Attorney General. Adrian Gobriel, CTV News, Toronto. The former U.S. president was given his latest trial date today. The Georgia District Attorney has proposed the election interference trial for Donald Trump begin on March 4th, a day before Super Tuesday, the biggest day in the presidential primary calendar. And Trump is the Republican frontrunner. In Georgia, Trump and the 18 alleged co-conspirators have fewer than 10 days to show up in the state where they're expected to be fingerprinted and get mugshots taken. Some tense moments in the skies over Texas after flames shot out of a passenger jet. An engine on the Southwest Airlines plane looked as though it was on fire. It departed from Houston and had to turn back, spending about 27 minutes in the air. Southwest says the engine had a, quote, mechanical issue, but didn't elaborate further. Canada's tourism industry is about to feel the sting of a diplomatic dispute between Ottawa and Beijing. China has left Canada off a list of approved nations for group tours, which means its travelers will be spending their time and money elsewhere. CTV's Kevin Gallagher reports. International tourists are drawn to Canada's iconic sites and natural beauty, all while boosting the economy. But businesses may soon have to live without Chinese travelers after an apparent snub from Beijing. I just think it's another blow to tourism business owners that have had a, a rough few years um, because of the restrictions related to the pandemic. China quietly left Canada off its approved list of destinations for tour groups, despite approving post-pandemic travel to destinations like Australia, Japan and the United States. The omission is a response to allegations Beijing is meddling in Canada's elections. The Chinese embassy in Canada says the Canadian side has repeatedly hyped up the so-called Chinese interference, insisting China is protecting the safety and legitimate rights of overseas Chinese citizens. That's what our hopes are, that through diplomatic means that we can reach out to the Chinese foreign ministry and, and try to make things better. China Before the pandemic, Chinese travelers were one of Canada's fastest growing tourist groups and some of the biggest spenders. According to Statistics Canada, more than 750,000 Chinese tourists came to Canada in 2018, spending $2 billion, the most of any overseas visitors. Canada fought to get on to China's approved list for years, with Prime Minister Stephen Harper securing a spot after a visit in 2009. But tensions between Ottawa and Beijing have been high since the arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou in 2018. Now the tourism industry is the latest victim of China's retaliation. As tourism businesses hope for a diplomatic settlement, many are hedging their bets, Omar, and will start marketing more aggressively to travelers from other countries. All right, Kevin, thank you. Shares of a little-known electric vehicle maker from Vietnam were down today after a blockbuster first trading session on Wall Street yesterday. Despite that, VinFast is still more valuable than some of the world's biggest automakers. At close yesterday, the company was worth $86 billion, far more than GM and Ford, worth about $50 billion each. 
The company was founded in 2017 and joins a crowded field of EV startups. The goal of those companies is to cash in on the green economy and reduce emissions. But as CTV's Quebec Bureau Chief Genevieve Beauchemin reports, one politician is proposing a solution that's become controversial. To put the brakes on emissions. Montréal. Quebec's energy minister suggested the number of vehicles on the roads should be half what it is today. If you want to be carbon neutral in 2050, Behavior has to change. In 2021 in Canada, there were 26.2 million registered cars. Nearly 7 million of those were in Quebec. And that's 2.6 million more in the province than a decade before that. Changing course is no easy feat, and some motorists say it requires a major overhaul. And I do have a pretty good car. I have a Dodge Charger, and I like it a lot. Would you give it up? Uh, depends. If it's a really good mode of transportation, it's nice and it's safe and it's, uh, it's effective, then yeah, I would, absolutely. Car culture is part of the fabric of the country. Many parts of Canada, including cities, suburbs, were built around the automobile. Today, the Quebec Conservatives claim the government had just declared a war on cars. And the car industry was stunned by the minister's statement. We will always need uh, individual vehicle to... Uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, manage our lives, you know. Some environmentalists say it's been seen as a bit of a taboo to talk about cutting down on the number of vehicles that has been viewed as a politically risky move. Before a cabinet meeting today, Quebec's premier stepped in. The priority right now is to move from a, a gas car to electric cars. We don't have any target reducing the total number of cars. But some environmentalists insist curbing the fleet by 50% is realistic, even necessary. It touches us because it's related to our life habits and um, to the way our cities are developed. But we surely need to rethink that. And some drivers say in the face of climate change, there's little choice. It's hard to ask people to do that, but it's, uh, I think the, the herd needs, to, needs us to do something about that. But it may be a bumpy road ahead. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Montreal. The family of an Ontario woman severely injured in a car crash believes technology in her phone may have saved her life. And they're speaking out tonight. Here's CTV's Heather Wright. All alone on an unfamiliar road in rural Ontario, 21-year-old Hannah Ralph's car crashed into a tree. We still don't really know what happened because she's not able to share that with us. Um, but what we do know is that um, as soon as it happened, we got a text that told us that a crash had been detected. Her parents say the crash detection feature on Hannah's iPhone 14 quickly sent alerts to her emergency contacts and to first responders. We were just stunned that they were able to get to her so fast. The iPhone 14 is equipped with crash detection when a serious crash takes place. It also shares the phone's exact coordinates. Even though she was on a rural road, like just a numbered road, she, they said she probably wouldn't have been found for hours if she hadn't had this um, technology. The tow truck driver told me that he just couldn't believe that Hannah had been found so quickly. Normally it would take potentially hours for somebody to be found after an accident. Hannah was taken to a local hospital where she received blood transfusions and later transferred to a trauma centre in Toronto where she remains in the ICU. She is showing signs of improvement and today was taken off a ventilator. We're really hoping that she's going to be able to get back on her feet again. Um, her body was pretty crushed in the accident and she's had a lot of surgeries already. So it's going to be a really long road. Her parents grateful to technology for helping save their daughter's life. The worst happened for us and... You know, thankfully, she was able to be um, found, helped, and she's still here with us. So. Heather Wright, CTV News, Toronto. Coming up. Do you have any place to say tonight? Real-life drama for a famous football family. Plus, when an ATM glitch gives out free money. The Bank of Ireland says it's fixed a technical glitch that sparked a flurry of overnight withdrawals. Social media video shows customers lining up at ATMs 
After word spread, the machines were allowing people to withdraw money they didn't have. The bank says all withdrawals will be correctly debited from customers' accounts. And it will be an all-European final at the Women's World Cup. But England here, England, oh, it's in! Australia have made a hash of it! England beat Australia 3-1 to today, knocking the hosts out of the tournament. The finals on Sunday with England playing Spain. Neither has won the cup before. A wealthy American couple is tackling claims from football star Michael Orr that they hoarded profits from a film inspired by his life. Here's CTV's John Venavelli Rao on the counterclaims. Do you have any place to stay tonight? A feel-good film based on a real-life story. Tonight, the football family made famous by the movie The Blind Side, feeling blindsided themselves and calling out the claims made by Michael Orr. This was somebody they treated as a son who has made public these allegations that are just ludicrous. On Monday, Orr filed a lawsuit stating the family that took him in as a teenager and helped him become a football star never legally adopted him and instead profited from his story. He claims he'd been tricked when he was 18 into signing documents that made Sean and Leanne Tui conservators. We're talking about a family trying to help someone in need. Uh, the Tuies did not control any of Mr. Orr's finances. The family's lawyers challenging Orr's claim he was unaware of the conservatorship until just six months ago. Noting in a book back in 2011, he wrote, Sean and Leanne would be named my legal conservators. Honestly, I didn't care what it was called. We were a family. Or says the couple negotiated a movie deal without him receiving any payment. But they say money from the movie was split evenly between family members, each getting $100,000, including Orr. They never needed his money. Mr. Tui sold his company for $220 million. They allege Orr, in fact, tried to shake down the family, threatening to plant a negative story in the press unless he was paid $15 million. Orr has long questioned how he was portrayed in the movie. And on social media, some have called for Sandra Bullock to return the Oscar she won for her role in the film. Meanwhile, Orr has said he wants to end the conservatorship, and the Tuies say they're ready to drop that arrangement at any time. John Venavelli Rao, CTV News, Toronto. Still ahead, the fight against medical misinformation. YouTube's push to purge fake cancer cures from its platform. Churchill, Manitoba has long been dubbed the polar bear capital of the world. But this year, conservation officers are responding to a record number of calls about the animals wandering into town. They've received 78 calls so far, compared to 18 at this time last year. And they say it's because of warmer temperatures. The ice melted approximately a month early. We were seeing plus 30 days all the way back in May. This means that the bears were coming on land sooner. And to deal with it all, Manitoba Conservation has hired extra staff. YouTube staff has new marching orders to crack down on medical misinformation. The social media platform has roughly 2.5 billion monthly users and now says it will remove videos that promote, among other things, potentially harmful treatments for cancer. CTV's Vanessa Lee explains. YouTube is cracking down on videos containing false claims about cancer treatments. In a blog, its global head of healthcare says this includes content that promotes unproven treatments in place of approved care or as a guaranteed cure. For instance, a video that claims garlic cures cancer or take vitamin C instead of radiation therapy would be removed. But unfortunately, there's a lot of material out there that's unproven, unfounded and frankly dangerous. As cancer patients go online to research symptoms and get advice after a diagnosis, doctors say it's often difficult for them to differentiate between fact and fiction. Adding misinformation can lead to doubts and delays. They will often point to alternate remedies, um, homeopathic remedies, herbal therapies, naturopathic therapies in place of, not in in concert with, but in place of conventional therapy. If you avoid conventional therapy for a disease like leukemia, it can lead to very serious life-threatening results. 
It's the latest step the video sharing platform is taking to battle medical misinformation, content that contradicts health authorities. It has also banned false claims about vaccines and abortions as it tries to balance harmful content while ensuring space for debate and discussion. As a global organization, you do have a moral obligation to ensure that misinformation and disinformation are not on your platform. YouTube says it will ramp up enforcement in the coming weeks and use a combination of AI and people to review videos as doctors urge patients to turn to reputable sources. Vanessa Lee, CTV News, Montreal. After the break, an inspiring medical mission. A young cancer patient teams up with the surgeon who saved her. Doctors don't always get to follow up on their patients once they're treated. But at one Toronto hospital, a woman who survived a brain tumor as a child is now working alongside the very neurosurgeon who saved her life. CTV's Allison Hurst on the career path inspired by her own medical journey. Jessica Rosenblum leaves Sick Kids Hospital these days no longer as a patient, but as a team member. Every morning I'm going up in the elevators into the lab. My 10 year old self is screaming with joy and excitement because that's where she wanted to be and she's here now 10 years later. It's been a very hard road with setbacks along the way, but it'll be 10 years in November since her brain tumor diagnosis and she met Dr. James Rutka. We were told that, you know, the only option is surgery on an inoperable tumor. The mass itself was approximately the size of a tangerine in an area of the brain um, that uh, is known as the pineal region and the brain stem. Following the surgery, Rosenblum says her parents were warned she may have to relearn how to walk and might not be able to breathe on her own. But instead, she says she woke up talking, joking and asking questions. I needed to know everything that was happening to me and I needed to know why. That desire sent her on a path studying biology and anatomy through school and now nursing in university ultimately bringing her back to the hospital where she was first diagnosed nearly a decade later as a summer student in Rutka's lab, learning alongside the man who saved her life and was her doctor until a couple years ago. Having seen her now through all of these uh, treatments and knowing that she was going to work in my laboratory for the summer was, uh, for me, um, a real dream come, come true. He's still the same amazing person, but now not as much as my doctor, but as a mentor. Rosenblum still needs to go for regular MRIs and had to have more radiation therapy a couple years ago when her tumor grew. Researching cancer while living with cancer is an interesting feeling, um, but it, it gives me some sense of like power almost to be able to look at these cells like under the microscope and be able to say like, I'm in control of you right now. Like I'm figuring you out right now. She plans to get her PhD with the hope of finding a better way to treat brain tumors in children. Alison Hurst, CTV News, Toronto. What an inspiring medical dream team. And that's a snapshot of this Wednesday for all of us at CTV National News. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.